What's poppin' everyone? You got your coach of the Chim Chargers here today with our week six battle of the APA. We're basically at the midway point of the season right now, six weeks in and a total of course of 12 weeks. And we're currently 5-0, looking to hopefully be 6-0 and continue our undefeated streak. And we're gonna be taking on my boy Kurt, coach of the Portage Herdiers, as you may have seen the team builder from yesterday. If you guys have not seen that, check out my team there. It gives you the full details of all the sets that I'm bringing and I guess kind of what I anticipated him to bring. And he's bringing a team that I sort of like I expected him to bring, I guess. A lot of the mods I definitely uh, was expecting to show up. But upon team preview, I realized that he did not bring the Piloswine, which is um, which is huge because that means that there are no electric immunities on his side, right? Like, as you can see, he brings Clefable, Gorgai, Skarmory, Darmanitan, Alolan, Muck, and Mega Gallade. So as you can see, no Piloswine, which means that no electric immunities he also didn't opt to bring the uh, the Gyarados, which is nice, so that I don't have to worry about a Dragon Dancing Sweeper. The only real threats on his team probably are going to be maybe like a setup Clefable, Mega Glade, which is obviously going to be either Swords Dance or Bulk Up, and then maybe just sort of play around the Scarf Darmanitan potentially is what I'm thinking is um, is what he has there. The Gorgite, Skarmory, and Alolan Muck, not really big threats, but they're just things we can break down with our other Pokemon that we have here, but I definitely anticipate uh, the Zero Aura to put in a lot of work. Upon team preview, I was like, okay, yeah, like I think Zero Aura can do a lot of work here because I'm Choice Banded. I have coverage for a lot of his team. Plasma Fist hits everything except for Gorgeist, which Knockoff does uh, do a lot of damage to with the Choice Band. And I have Salazzle, which is also great in this matchup as well because he can toxic literally everything. With the Corrosion ability, he can toxic Alolan Muck and Skarmory two Pokemon that can't usually be toxic, so that's amazing. Seismitoad, I think, could also put in a lot of work here. His only water resist is Gorgeist. If we can weaken that, then my Seismitoad can put in work, potentially. So I have a good amount of win conditions, like Zero Aura, Seismitoad are two huge win conditions for sure. I have uh, Garchomp for Stealth Rocks, of course, and Polyam for best defogging, and um, just some Crobat for some, I guess, U-turn momentum utility and stuff like that. And I feel like in this matchup, my best lead it's probably going to be the Salazzle. The reason is because it, um, it does have Protect. It is a sub-Protect Toxic set. So it can start pressuring him a lot early on in game. And it can also scout for whatever move that Scarf Darmanitan can go for. Because his potential leads are either going to be that Darmanitan. It could be Choice Scarf to try to go for U-Turn early on. Scouting out my, uh, my leads and just having that nice um, speed potential that it has. Usually with a Choice Scarf, um, his other potential lead is probably going to be Clefable, which could set up Stealth Rocks. Um, it's also a great lead versus potential leads that I have, for instance, Garchomp and maybe even Seismitoad. So I think that Salazzle is just a great sort of anti-lead versus him. Um, so I think that's basically what my thought process was going into this match and um you know let's just go ahead and get right into it see how this game goes and of course my my overall game plan like i said was just to try to win with zero aura like as you can see his team doesn't have a lot of, a lot for it and zero aura plus hasn't sort of even if we get rid of the gorgeist can uh, can put in the finest of work so let's just get right into it see how this match goes and as you can see he decides to challenge me and of course this may or may not be Kurt's first mistake and he decides to lead off with the Clefable as I lead off with my Hida Toxida, my nice uh, my nice Salazzle and he's going to switch out here fearing of course the potential sludge wave or poison move from a, an offensive Salazzle but I just go right for the sub here. Behind the sub is he brings in Alolan Muck and we get to see what Salazzle does best with its ability. Corrosion Toxic, we get to poison the Muck right now behind a substitute. So he goes for the knockoff here, getting rid of my sub, breaking the sub, of course. And um, I'm restoring HP with the Black Sludge, which is nice, so I can keep myself healthy. Go right for the Protect here so that I can get some more recovery back. And of course, give him an extra turn of chip damage from that Toxic, which is going to be very, uh, very essential in terms of racking up damage uh, overall in the long run. So I'm going to go for the sub here as he goes right for the knockoff once again. And uh, of course, I'm going to get some health back from that. He'll be taking a bit more damage here. Now, actually predicting him to want to switch out, anticipating him to kind of catch onto my pattern, I'm going to go for the sub instead of clicking protect after I sub there. So I'm going to sub twice in a row, expecting to switch out, which he does do, into Mega Gallade. He's going to Mega Evolve here, and he's going to want to try to break that substitute by going for, I guess, an attack on me. But I get the faster Toxic off. Of course, I am a very, very fast Pokemon, faster than Mega Gallade. So... 
I can go for that as he goes for the Zen Headbutt, breaking my sub. And now the Alolan Muk and the Glade are both poisoned. And I have a Salazla, which is doing pretty well. I can go for the Protect here because there's no way he's switching out right now. He goes for the Zen Headbutt. So right now what I'm going to do is uh, just literally do the same thing that I did to that Alolan Muk. Right for the sub once again. Rack some more damage on that uh, Glade. And he's poisoned, right? So that's like extremely good for us and we're pressuring him so much right now we're, we're really pressuring him a lot and sort of uh getting into his mind for uh for later on in the game right now early on you know just uh the advantages of course of that i'm gonna go for the protect as he actually goes into dormant and i figured that it was not worth trying to sub again and predict him to switch out because he kind of messed up that in the first time wasn't sure if he wanted to do it again but he goes to our mana town, I kind of scout by going for the protect once again to uh, to see what he would lock himself into if he was Choice Scarf. I was going to play it like it was Choice Scarf. So he actually doubles as I go to Garchomp to try to give him Rough Skin Rocky Helmet into his Gorgeist. So I take this as an opportunity to go right for the Stealth Rocks here. The Stealth Rocks will be nice to chip down his team. Break Sturdy on the Skarmory as well as um, Chip Darmanitan 25% each time it comes in. He gets off a Will-O-Wisp though, which I'm not too worried about because I am a defensive chomp. And defensive chomp doesn't really care about a burn just because it's not an offensive mon. Gonna go to Salazzle here actually, as he actually switches out into his Clefable. And I'm gonna go for the sub once again thinking he might switch out. But he actually packs Encore on his Clefable, so pretty good. I guess he might have had that for if in case I brought like Reunuclus or something to Encore me into Calm Minds. So that was pretty smart on his part to bring that if I did have Reunuclus. But I'm locked into Substitute. I'm just going to go for it again just so that I'll get into that range where I'm ab above 50% in case he has rocks. I can switch in twice. Um, he's going to Thunderbolt. As I actually go into Empoleon, I expected him to want to go for a Moonblast, predicting me to switch into either Zero or a Garchomp. But he's actually faster, so he knocks off Best Defogger. Like, I was going to sack Empoleon anyways because it was not very useful since it was a, a, essentially a Shuckaberry Empoleon to deal with Gyarados potentially. But didn't really need Empoleon because there are no hazards on my side anyways. Go to Crobat to pressure out the Clefable. You turn out predicting the Skarmory and go right into Zero Aura. Now here's where I make a really good play. Okay, check this out, right? Check me out right here. I'm going to predict him to switch out of Skarmory on the electric move into the Gorgeist, which is the only thing stopping Zero Aura's Plasma Fist from cleaning up his team. Going to go for the knockoff, predicting that switch here, and that puts it in range of, you know, a Plasma Fist. If he does switch out, he does, of course, decide to stay in, and I can knock out the Gorgeist with the knockoff here. And his the rest of his team essentially is very vulnerable to the Plasma Fist. Um, so I'm going to actually switch out of Gallade here into my Garchomp as he goes for the bulk up. And of course, I don't want Zero Aura to take any damage from this thing. Zero Aura is the biggest win con of this match. So I switch out into Garchomp here as he goes for the bulk up, plus the Drain Punch here. Getting some health back, but also taking damage from the Rough Skin, the Rocky Helmet, and my Dragon Tail. So I send him flying, uh, send that boy out, and I'm going to be sending him into his Skarmory. So Skarmory gets in, and he actually gets some health back from the Leftovers, which is fine. I decide here, instead of trying to switch out or anything, I want to kind of scout what set he is, go for the Fire Blast. He definitely does have some Spadef investment. That Fire Blast didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. I thought it would do at least like 50 or something, but he's definitely uh, has some Spadef investment is what I'm thinking right now in the game. So I'm just going to go with the Fire Blast here, try to wear myself down a little bit, trying to uh, sort of get a safe switch in maybe into another Mon. And now at this point in time, Garchomp is at a point where it can switch out here um, if he does decide to set up a spike or something, it can always come back in later on. It's not at a health where it just dies to spikes um, in case he does set that up. But he goes for the roost, so he's back at full health. I'm back in with uh, Salazzle, of course. And um, I can actually just go right here for the flamethrower. Nothing really stopping me from doing that right now. Get some damage off on this uh, Darmanitan. And so, like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and sack the guard jump here. I don't really need that anymore. I can get enough recoil on this thing if he does decide to attack me so that he will get knocked out by stealth rocks anytime he brings it back in or switches out so he's gonna go for the superpower on the garchomp right he takes rough skin rocky helmet and he takes life orb so i'm like wait a second this is not a choice scarf darmanitan so i'm gonna go here to zero aura i'm like okay it's about that time let's go ahead and plasma fists to uh knock out this darmanitan here with the zero aura knock this thing out right he's gonna bring in his little muck you're gonna take that rocks chip very nice go right for the plasma fist once again choice banded gonna go ahead and knock this boy out so a little muck is gone next pokemon he's gonna bring in is gonna be that clefable 
Now, of course, as you know, Clefable was doing a lot of damage to Empoleon. Leads me to believe he might actually be like maybe Life Orb to get the damage off from that with like Magikarp boost. He lives on a sliver, gets off a Moon Blast, gets some big damage off on me, but I don't get knocked out. So I'm going to go for the Plasma Fist once again. Knock out the uh, Clefable right here. And that Pokemon goes down. Now he's going to bring in his Skarmory. As we saw, Skarmory took that Fire Blast from Garchomp pretty well. So he definitely had to be a Spadef or some kind of uh, bulky Skarmory with some Spadef EVs. Going to knock that boy out with a Plasma Fist as well. And last but not least is going to be that Mega Gallade. And that thing is going to take some Rock damage as well. Go ahead here. Plasma Fist. Get the faster Plasma Fist off here. Go right for that and knock out the Mega Gallade. And that is going to be GG. It is indeed your boy Envy. So, um, pretty good game overall. We got to really see, like, I guess the potential of Zero Aura. And Zero Aura got six knockouts in this game. It knocked out the Gorgeist and then went in with the Plasma Fist. Like, that was amazing. Um, I actually, I had not even realized. I had not even realized it at all at that point. Um, until, like, after when I was, I guess, inputting the scores or whatever in the, in the dock. Um, that Zero Aura actually got six knockouts. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> literally cleaned up and swept his team too so um, that's pretty cool to see as well and um, I, I just really like how I guess the initial pressure that uh, Salazzle put we got to see sort of a debut from Salazzle and then Zero Aura really sort of showing why it is such a threat and such a danger in um, in the league format and that too it was a tier 2 mon uh, keep in mind you know this thing was tier 2 it hits really really hard with a choice ban and just has that speed and that power, the coverage for it to put in a lot of work. So, very satisfied with this match overall. And that's good. And of course, uh, good game to uh, Kurt. You know, be sure to check him out, of course. And um, I'll be watching his side of the game as well. I think he does live comms, so it should be interesting to see. And, um, and yeah, so that's going to be it. So, hope you all enjoyed this match. Let me know what you guys think, of course. Looking forward to hearing from you all, as always. And yeah, Jim Charger is now 6-0 and right now. So, we'll continue on strongly, hopefully. And... Of course, we'll make the playoffs, obviously, but we'll try to win that as well and have some fun with uh, the rest of our drafts. And that's going to be it. So I'll see you all on the next one and peace.